us here at Ontario Shores. Thank, thank you! From Stella Circle in Newfoundland and Labrador, thank you to all the runners, walkers, donors, and shoppers Drug Mart. This year, Run for Women, we have our largest number of registrants ever. Thank you, Jen. On behalf of all the women involved in women's mental health at the Royal, your support for the Run for Women over the last eight years has been phenomenal. We want to thank Shoppers Drug Mart, The Running Room, and Flow Marketing for their unwavering support. Thank you to the 400 captains and the thousands of people who have joined teams. Together, we are transforming lives. Thank you. Thank you to the Shoppers Drug Mart runners and walkers for their support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ici Marise et Michel de la Fondation Cerveau. À tous les coureurs, les marcheurs et tous les gens de Pharmapie. On vous remercie au nom de la Fondation Cerveau, des usagers et de tout le personnel du Suisse de la Capitale Nationale. Merci. Hi, I'm Moira. And I'm Wendy. And we're from my sister's place in London. We'd like to thank all the walkers and runners and all of our local Shoppers Drug Mart teams. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Janessa Greening, President and CEO of the BC Women's Health Foundation. Thank you to you, the runners and walkers, for participating in this incredible event, and to our partners at Shoppers Drug Mart for your continued generosity and support of the health and well-being of women. The support today that we receive will go to the FUR program at BC Women's Hospital for women in recovery along with their babies. It'll provide an outdoor healing space that will allow them a place to recharge, heal and breathe. You from the Canadian Mental Health Association in Saskatoon and we want to thank all the participants who were in the Shoppers Drug Mart Run for Women in Saskatoon. You guys rock and we look forward to you running, hopping, skipping, walking, rolling, whatever you want to do, you're supporting our programs at CMHA Saskatoon. Thank you. On behalf of the Calgary Health Trust and the Women's Mental Health Clinic, we'd like to extend a sincere thank you to the runners, walkers, and other supporters of the Run for Women, as well as the Shoppers Drug Mart, for furthering the conversation around mental health and empowering women across the country. Thank you! Thank you from the lowest hole hospital for women for all the runners, the walkers, and Shoppers Drug Mart. Have fun today. Let's go! On behalf of the mental health team at Mark Costello Hospital, I would like to thank Shoppers Drug Mart and all of you for participating in the first ever virtual run for women. Every day we see firsthand how your courageous steps break down stigma and truly make a difference in the lives of the women we care for in our community. Thank you for making a difference. On behalf of CMHA Waterloo Wellington, we are so excited to be part of the Shoppers Drug Mart Run for Women. Every single penny raised is going to be helping women's mental health programs in Waterloo Wellington. Thank you all so much for all the support we needed in our area and every single one of our participants and staff, thank you so much. From the bottom of our heart, thank you for your support. My name is Chris Lobna. I'm here today as the director of the Boise Family Crisis Resource Center. I'm here with my lovely team just to thank everybody for coming out for this year's Run for Women 2020. It is not possible without each and every one of you that we're close to 1,300 participants. Thank you to all the stores of Shoppers Drug Mart, walkers, runners, crawlers, donators. So on behalf of all of us, we'd like to say thank, thank you, Nelsie! My name's Dr. Maxine Lewis. I'm the Joint Chief of Mental Health and Addictions for St. Joseph's Healthcare Hamilton and Niagara Health. These funds are really going to help us provide um, amazing care. We've been so grateful to Shoppers Drug Mart. They've been fantastic in supporting women's health concerns, uh, specifically at St. Joseph's. On behalf of Halton Healthcare's mental health team, we would like to thank the walkers, the runners, and Shoppers Drug Mart for helping ensure that the women and girls in our community get access to the resources that they need. Your generous donations help provide additional support and help create new models of care. Thank you for coming together and making a real difference to those who are in crisis. À toutes les participantes et tous les participants de la course Forma Prix, aimez-vous 2020? Et de la part de la Fondation de l'Hôpital Général de Montréal. Merci pour votre soutien. Thank you for your support. 
Bonne course! Bonne marche! Bonne randonnée! Woo! A huge thank you to all the Winnipeg walkers and runners, and especially Shoppers Drug Mart for hosting the Love You Run for Women. We are absolutely thrilled. We're now able to host our Women's Speaker Series, our Postpartum Depression Warline, as well as our Women's Wellness Groups. Thank you, Shoppers. We love you. Thank you for joining us virtually this year at the Toronto Run for Women. Your participation is directly supporting the Women's Mental Health Program at Women's College Hospital. On behalf of Women's College Hospital and Foundation, thank you to all the runners and walkers and Shoppers Drug Mart for running with us virtually this year. Hello everyone and happy Run for Women Day in Canada. It's finally here. I'm Meredith Shaw from My Heart Radio and I am so honored to be your host of the very first ever broadcast celebration of Run for Women brought to you by the Love You by Shoppers Drug Mart program. I'm standing outside one of our charity partners, Women's College Hospital in my hometown of Toronto. I've been a part of this Run for Women practically since the beginning. I've attended dozens of live events and experienced the spirit, the community, the crazy crazy hair, the tutus, and the joy of thousands crossing that finish line. But what's most memorable about these events is the inspiration that we feel when we hear the stories of those who so bravely share their journey with mental health. We can't gather together this year, but as our charity partners agree, we are so thankful and so proud of the 26,000 virtual runner participants. As a Run for Women walker or runner, you are making a difference. Yes, you are making a difference in your own community. And we want every run or walk to feel like a safe space of acceptance, of inclusivity, of celebration. And we invite you into our safe space today. If you're watching this before you go out on a walk or run, we are going to motivate you with inspiring stories from all across Canada. Because all of us will be experiencing this event within our own community, our own bubble. But the virtual run is taking place in 18 cities across Canada. We'll take a look at some of our iconic running routes throughout the show. Our first segment brings us to the majestic forests of Canada's west coast. Check this out. Hey everyone, it's Nira Aurora from 94.5 Virgin Radio and iHeart Radio right here in Vancouver. The run for women starts in this beautiful village at the University of British Columbia. But once the run starts and once the course starts, it only gets more beautiful. British Columbia is known for its natural wonders. We have the ocean, the beautiful mountains, the majestic forest. And with the run for women, we'll take you through Pacific Spirit Park where you'll breathe in the breathtaking forest. Imagine this, over a thousand runners all under this cat canopy of trees. It's such a cool place to run. We're spoiled with the nature in Vancouver. It fills us with energy, the energy we need to raise funds for women's mental health for BC Women's Hospital. Our slogan this year is together we are unstoppable. It's cool to consider that you're participating with over 26,000 participants in 18 unique communities across Canada. You are making a huge impact on the lives of women supported by our Run for Women charity partners. But the Run for Women was not always this big. Back in 2013, it was the vision of the running room to create a running series for women and the vision of the Love You by Shoppers Drug Mart program to raise support for the chronically underfunded women's mental health programming. And while walking and running events are classic ways to fundraise, when it comes to mental health, the fit is even stronger. And over the next hour or so, Catherine Dines from the Bell Media family and a huge supporter of the Run for Women Ottawa initiative will be speaking with incredibly compelling contributors to this event. First up, Catherine's chatting with Dr. Valerie Taylor about the power of exercise in managing our mental health. Welcome to Dr. Valerie Taylor, Chair of the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Calgary. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for asking me to participate. This is one of the most fun events ever, and it's always a highlight of my year. It really is. So since Run for Women raises money for mental health programs, we we're hoping you'd speak a little bit about the positive link between exercise and mental health. I think that we can't oversell the links between mental health and exercise and just the benefits from a basic science perspective. Uh, you know, the, 
exercise reduces or induces the same chemicals in your brain that many of the antidepressants do. And so exercise is literally like an antidepressant. And I certainly prescribe it for my patients exactly that way. Sometimes on a prescription pad with their other medications, it makes such a difference. So Dr. Taylor, I'm wondering why is there a resistance for some people to exercise? You know what? It really depends on a lot of factors. I, I think your overall health is a big one. Sometimes people just feel like they don't have the physical ability to exercise. And that's why I always encourage people to kind of take it gently. No one expects you to go into any sort of exercise program and be able to run a marathon. You know, you walk before you can run literally and sometimes walking is enough just doing that that's a huge accomplishment but people may find that they start to build on that and to gain mastery we also know that while exercise can help treat depression when you're depressed sometimes getting out of bed is difficult let alone contemplating you know starting an exercise program and so again find a buddy find a friend do something together try to use small successes to motivate you so how do you think run for women encourages canadians to take care of their mental health i think one of the best things about run for women is that it encourages conversation and i think a huge reason that there's such shame and stigma associated with mental illness is that we just don't talk about it enough. One of my favorite things at Run for Women is seeing people be very open and honest about their struggles and hearing others go, I, I had no idea. I thought I was the only one experiencing that. And I think it's only through that type of open communication that we're going to realize that there's literally no one in Canada who's not been impacted by mental illness. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Taylor. Thank you and everyone have a great run. You walkers and runners can feel good about that. Can you imagine if all Canadians truly understood the connection between exercise and mental health? I mean, we know you do. That's why you're taking to the streets, walking and running for women's mental health. Our first route tour took us to the West Coast. Now we head to a city known as the gateway to the West, Winnipeg, Manitoba. This is a big event and it's still growing. Their new route is giving them some serious street cred. Check it out. Hey, it's Mandy from 99.9 Bob FM here in Winnipeg, and I'm going to tell you what you would experience if you were participating in Run for Women here in Winnipeg. The Run for Women here in Winnipeg is celebrating the seventh year, and because it's been such a huge success, in 2020 we were going to take it to the streets to start here on Broadway in the center of downtown. From there, the run route travels west and takes runners and walkers across the Maryland Bridge. Then we head through Wellington Crescent and follow the Assiniboine River. It's an absolutely beautiful out and back course. We are so excited to be ruling the roads in 2021 and to grow and to raise much needed funds for women's mental health programs with the Mood Disorders Association of Manitoba. It's so exciting to imagine all of us gathering to walk and run together again one day. Here's to hoping we get that done in 2021. While this event is about thousands gathering, it really does come down to the emotion of hearing individual stories. And here's the journey of an incredible woman from Calgary, Alberta, that she shared at the Run for Women Calgary in 2019 in front of thousands of people. You can hear a pin drop. This is Yelda's story. Once I had my son, at uh, about maybe past around a month, I was just constantly sad, I was crying, and I had heard of baby blues before, but I knew this was just something different. It was to the point where the sadness just wasn't stopping. I, you know, I couldn't think clearly. Things just didn't make sense to me. You know, I was diagnosed with postpartum depression as well as postpartum anxiety. And so for me, the depression part was, I was really low in mood, really sad, hardly motivated. I couldn't really do a lot. Um, and the depression part was, the way I would describe it is, sorry, the anxiety part was if you go on a roller coaster and then there's that drop and that drop feeling that you have in your gut where you're really scared and everything just makes you want to throw up, I would have that feeling all day, all night, to the point that sometimes I'd have to be medicated to be able to sleep because the feeling would just linger the entire day and it wouldn't go away. We were back in Calgary and it was just after New Year's. I was changing my son 
um, on the floor on the carpet at my mom's house and I got up to put away the diaper and he was on the floor and I literally had a thought that and I lifted my leg and the thought was you need to crush his skull with your foot right now and kill this kid and I was so scared I literally just dropped everything moved away from my son I called my mom and I said you need to take him I am going to harm this child somehow and so she took him I called my husband um, I said you have to take me to emergency something's really really wrong with me and I went to the emergency room and I came to the foothills hospital to the emergency and I saw the nurse and I just told her I said look something is really wrong with me I need you to take me in I don't care if you take my son away forever and I never see him again I'm gonna end up killing him I'm gonna end up killing myself I need to be put away right now and she hugged me and she said it's it's okay um, you don't need to worry this actually is a disease this happens but thank you for coming in and not actually harming your child because a lot of moms don't realize that or they're too scared to come in for fear that their children will be taken away and so they don't do anything about it and they end up in cases where they harm themselves or their children it wasn't until September of 2016 where I was fully at the point where I felt completely normal again and a large part of it I think was due to help from the clinic here and Dr. Muhammad. In my case, I was lucky. I had my mom and my two sisters and my husband who were all very supportive. Now, literally my son is my sole reason for life. Like my son is the absolute love of my life. Anyone who knows me knows that kid means the world to me. And he loves me more than any other person in the world. You know, and I'm so blessed and lucky to have him. And whether you're the person who goes through it, you're the partner or spouse or friend or co-worker or family or any of that at the end of the day we all came from a woman at the end of the day I guarantee you there's one woman somewhere out there if you take the time to talk to people and have people share their experience who's gone through something like this hearing those stories it's just hard not to think of our own lives and our own loved ones and, and how to help and you can still help either donate to yourself or get a few more donations for your run today. There is still time with online fundraising open until October 1st. It is with that vision of helping that Shoppers Drug Mart came on board as the title sponsor back in 2013. And since then, they have helped to raise over $10 million. This next segment shows us the passion that has fueled that growth. From there, we'll go back to Catherine Dines, who will talk to longtime passionate lead and Shoppers Drug Mart pharmacist, Christine Singh, who will give us some important health insights. Hi, I'm Lewis. And I'm Samson. And we are Shoppers Drug Mart Spadina at DuPont. This is our annual run for women. This year is a little bit different. We're going to be running to stores uh, to keep our social distancing. And this flag behind us will be passed 27 times from store to store, each enthusiastically supporting the run for women. And here we go! Hi, my name is Christine Singh. At Shoppers Drug Mart, our social purpose is women's health. We call it Love You by Shoppers Drug Mart. Did you know that one in three women are affected by some form of mental illness, whether it be anxiety or depression? Women are more susceptible, have multiple gender-specific risk factors that predispose them to mental health issues. We're running together to help support each other and other people within our communities. We are running together to create awareness and drive change, and that is something we all should be proud of. Hi, this is the team from store 1321. To think that for the 500 pharmacist owners and their store teams are signed up to participate in the run for women across Canada. That's out of 26,000 participants. And we're halfway. Hi, I'm Alicia. I feel great. Truth told, that's why I run. Many Canadians still don't know aerobic exercise. Like running is recommended in clinical guidelines to help treat stress, anxiety, and mild to moderate depression. Hi, we are Store 1320. This event takes place all across Canada, and I want to do a shout out to all the 4,500 Shoppers Drug Mart and Farm Brave colleagues who are putting women's health first.
Robert Gerbart, we stand behind our social purpose. That's why so many of our pharmacist owners and their store teams are engaged in participating and raising funds for local women's mental health charities through the Run for Women. It's not just for other people to participate. We lead by example. So on behalf of Shoppers Drug Mad and Pharma Pre, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for raising some help. Welcome Christine Singh. Christine is a Shoppers Drug Mart pharmacy owner in Toronto. Hello Christine. Hi Catherine. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being with us. I would love to hear your thoughts on uh, how you feel Run for Women. Uh, why is it vital? Why are we doing this? The Love You program at Shoppers Drug Mart is really uh, committed to putting women's health first. They really do so by empowering women to make their health a priority and really raising much needed funds for local women's charities. And we noticed that when we work together with these charities, you know, amazing things can and have happened. You know, since 2011, we've raised about $74 million uh, towards these local women's charities. And it's that, and together with working with these charities, we've really advanced women's health and we've provided support systems so women can really uh, feel their best. So have you made any observations during the pandemic and uh how COVID-19 has affected women specifically in their mental health? I've noticed both professionally and personally, conversations really did change. Every conversation circled around the impact uh, the COVID pandemic has on our mental health. And as a result, um, you know, I saw a Shoppers Drug Mart survey that showed that I think one in three individuals um, since the pandemic had added stress and anxiety. And one in 10 of those had found that that level of stress actually affected their function. That, I guess, coupled with the fact that we know that one in three women um, are affected by some form of mental health illness, and we know there are gender-specific risk factors for mental health conditions, that it, you know, it is a combination of these things that you know, really make it important at this time to really advocate and become involved in you know, uh, programs like the Run for Women. Could you share why you are personally passionate about Run for Women? There are two things. Everything I probably spoke of already, you know, about the wonderful things that are, are being done when we raise funds and work with these charities, but also from a clinical perspective, from a, you know, from being a pharmacist that I know that clinical guidelines include exercise for mild to moderate depression. I am passionate about, you know, spreading the word and participating in something like the Run for Women because it engages people to come out and run and do something for their own mental health Health, alongside supporting such amazing programs um, at Women's College Hospital. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Catherine. I appreciate it. Thank you, Catherine. Christine Singh has incredible energy. Wouldn't you love her as your pharmacist? There are passionate, committed supporters from Shoppers Drug Mart like Christine all across Canada. And I can't wait to tell you a little bit more about that later. Our next course shows off the route in downtown Toronto. The streets are filled with walkers and runners for our in-person event, which starts right here, practically at the doors of our charity partner, the iconic Women's College Hospital. Let's check out the rest of the Toronto route. The run leaves the grounds of the hospital and heads west, immediately taking runners to the beautiful Queen's Park. After heading west along college, it heads north along Spadina. As you run, you can be inspired by the classic architecture of the University of Toronto campus. Yep, the route then runs by all of the amazing fashion hotspots on the famous Bloor Street, my fave. It's the perfect distraction. And it ends up here, back at Women's College Hospital, where the warmth, the energy, and the support is amazing. I attend multiple events in the GTA every year as the MC of Run For Women, but that Toronto event <laughs> definitely stands out. Women's health, let's be real, it's been rocked in 2020, impacted by a pandemic that none of us will forget. And the impact to our mental health is real. And for the first time in our lives, many of us are sharing details of our experiences. And there are many days when we struggle with our mood. And we're here to say you are in a safe space and that it's okay to feel the way that you do. 
If you're feeling not yourself, if you're eating and sleeping more or less than usual, experiencing a lack of motivation, the inability to manage daily stresses, feeling low for a longer than usual period of time and more intensely than usual, please connect with your doctor, one of our charity partners, or a trusted person in your life. And while COVID has affected us all, the impact on women is being experienced in a different way. And so to help us understand the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on women's health, Catherine will now speak to the president and CEO of BC Women's Health Foundation, Janessa Greening. We'd like to welcome president and CEO of BC Women's Health Foundation, Janessa Greening. Thank you for being with us, Janessa. We'd like to know how the Run for Women supports programming at BC Women's Health. So for us at BC Women's um, Health Foundation, the funds that are going to be coming to us from the Shoppers Run for Women are going to be supporting our FUR program at our beloved BC Women's Hospital. It's a program that supports women um, recovering from substance use along with their babies, and it allows us to provide them with um, an outdoor healing space, which will give them uh, a wonderful opportunity to kind of heal and breathe and feel recharged as they go through the program. So Janessa, the pandemic is impacting everyone. How do you feel it's specifically impacting women? Initially, the public health measures that were put out um, that were essential to slowing the curve were things like closing schools, sending um, folks home, um, childcare was harder to come by, and those things disproportionately impacted women. I mean, recently, the Canadian Prosperity Project shared um, with, the, um, with the country that the women that they'd interviewed, a third of them have thought about leaving the workforce since the start of the pandemic due to the increase of caretaking responsibilities. And then we see that between 80 and 90% of healthcare workers on the front lines are women. And so they're being exposed not only to the virus, but to the challenges and the anxiety and the mental health concerns that come with caring for people during a pandemic. And of course, we know that the isolation measures that um, were put in place have seen substantial increases in gender-based violence for women across this country. And so if you think about all of those pieces, and there's so many more I could share, though, that women are actually carrying the burden of this pandemic. And we know we've also experienced the highest percentage of job losses. And so if you think of the fact that prior to the pandemic, women made up 70% of people living in poverty, women and girls, and 80% of single parent households, that we can anticipate that in order for us to kind of move forward, I would argue, um, during the pandemic and post the pandemic, we need to be thinking about the health and the well-being of women, or we won't see the recovery that we're hoping for. And, and we know that the pandemic will continue to, to prove out to be a challenge for women. And I know even for myself as a single mom of a four-year-old and juggling all of those pieces that, you know, it's hard to manage the mental health and anxiety that sometimes comes from, from these days. And so we continue to see that be a challenge and things like this run are absolutely essential in both raising awareness and funds to support efforts to actually work um, to solve and create um, solutions for these problems that we're starting to see. What are some uh, words of encouragement you could offer to women who might be struggling watching right now? You know, I think and it's such a strange thing to suggest when we're all trying to, you know, slow the curve and, and, and maintain levels of isolation, but I think we have to create new forms of community. Uh, I think those are essential and it is a part of our mental health and our mental well-being. And I think we need to come up with creative ways to continue to be connected and also to connect it to our bodies. And so this run is a great example of that. Thank you so much for being with us today and celebrating Run for Women Day in Canada. It's awesome. Yes, it's an exciting day. And thanks to everybody who's participating. Thank you. Hi again, and thanks for continuing to join us in the Run for Women presented by the Love You by Shoppers Drug Mart program. Today, you're creating your own story by running and walking for women's mental health, and you should feel so good about what you're doing. We cannot thank you enough. This next story comes from Hamilton, Ontario, and was part of their run promotion. Check it out. I'm Erin Dunham, co-owner of The Other Bird Restaurant Group. We run restaurants like Mule, Rapscallion, and others. I was once a patient at the Mood Disorders Clinic at St. Joseph's Healthcare Hamilton. They treated me incredibly, uh, they took care of me, and they got me through a really hard time in my life. When I was first a patient at St. Joe's, it was a little different, it was a little more institutionalized, and I would even say uh, added a bit of stigma to mental health. But the new build is gorgeous, airy, you feel comfortable, you can walk through it and just feel safe. So now I don't feel like 
a mental patient when I go to St. Joe is I feel just like I'm going to see my doctor anywhere else. And it's really, for me, changed my perspective on how people view me as someone with mental health issues. And it just makes me feel more comfortable and like everything's gonna be better. So it's because of my experience, I've decided to join the Shoppers Drug Mart Love You Run For Women. All the money raised in Hamilton is going straight to St. Joe's to support women's mental health programming. These funds are really gonna help us provide amazing care, provide cutting edge research for all women who are dealing with mental health issues across the region. It's really, I can't, I can't emphasize that enough, how very grateful we are. Register, donate, or learn more at stjoesfoundation.ca slash runforwomen. What an incredible story. Erin, thank you so much for sharing. Not one of our own stories started yesterday. The arc of our own experience starts in youth, and it's becoming widely known that the rate of mental illness among youth is growing. Run For It is a high school mental health running program that aims to challenge mental health issues in youth. And when COVID hit, the program was quickly redesigned to go online and grew at an impressive speed. Over 300 groups across the country participated. The teachers who saw the need and the value and brought the COVID version of the Run For It program to life, they're heroes. They care so much about these youth. And Catherine now talks with one of our hero Run For It teachers. We are saying hello to high school teacher Danielle Zafirovsky. She's a teacher in Markham, Ontario. Welcome. Hi, how's it going? Excellent. Thank you for being with us. It's an exciting day across the country. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So uh, I want to start by asking you about your observations of students and how they're dealing with their mental health through the pandemic and all the concerns that come with COVID? Um, so at the end of last year and the start of this school year for elementary, middle and high school students, um, it was unlike any other um, during their lifetime or will be in their lifetime, no matter if they're starting with in-person instructions, distance learning or a mix of both, they're starting a new school year during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, as a result, they're experiencing a lot of uncertainty, but at this point excited to be connecting with peers again, as well as teachers online. Um, I think it's important at this point to remain connected while also practicing self-care while at home. We would love to hear your feedback on the Run For It program. I understand it's a similar program to Run For Women, but tailored for students and your students have experience with this? Yeah, so originally when we started the program back in early February, students and staff were excited to be a part of a program that dealt with managing mental health through exercise. Um, we had students from grade 9 to 12, which was very exciting. However, once COVID hit and shut down schools in mid-March, um, it was really hard to connect students with information regarding the program just because we were kind of all over the place. But luckily, it was redesigned to be online and students were able to access the information perfectly. Um, and it really gave the guidance and a schedule, which is really important to maintain daily, even during a pandemic. Staying in shape with regular exercise not only provides physical benefits, but it also keeps minds sharp, elevates the mood, reinforces the discipline of healthy habits, and serves as a readiness routine for once schools and work began to reopen or begin to reopen. So one of the things I find really frustrating as a mom is how many times I would talk to my kids about fitness and getting in shape and nutrition, and, you know, they roll their eyes or, you know, we do stuff, but they complain a little bit, and then they go to school and a special speaker would come in and they'd come home and start getting excited about all the stuff that I was talking about. And I'd say, okay, well, whatever works. So just tell us a little bit about why it's so important for kids to, to exercise and to try and keep healthy. Yeah, for sure. So staying in shape really um, boosts up mental health. Um, it really keeps you sharp um, while also um, creating that discipline of healthy habits. So even if it's just 10 minutes, at least it's something during your day-to-day uh, -day life that motivates you and uh, keeps your mind active while also your body. Um, and then that's a really important factor for mental health is uh, maintaining a routine, but also being physically active. Um, because all in all, if you're physically active, it's also um, mentally active as well. So as an educator, do you think it would be valuable to build in a, a wellness component to all the curriculum? Yeah, for sure. So we as teachers try to incorporate um, the social, academic, emotional and uh, 
uh, spiritual learning in each of our courses, whether it is through math, science, history, whatever, um, just because we understand the importance and the need for it as our society is changing ever so drastically while also presenting a million challenges at the same time. And I guess with this COVID pandemic, it also has reinforced the amount of uh, mental health awareness that we need to take part in. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you for helping Run for Women. Thank you so much for having me. The growth of Run for Women starts with an invitation. We ask a friend, they ask a friend. A Run for Women team is formed and a mission of change has begun. In our nation's capital, the invitation has definitely gone virtual as they will welcome over 5,000 virtual participants. It's incredible. A special shout out to Health Canada for having the largest team in Canada with 272 teammates in Ottawa, 49 teammates in Vancouver and 11 teammates in Edmonton. Félicitations aux leaders de Santé Canada qui ont incité plus de 100 employés à participer au programme Pensant Autrement. The Ottawa Run supports the Royal Ottawa. Here is a view of the work that they do. When you support the Shoppers Run for Women, you're helping women like Alice. Alice took part in our peer support program that offers support to women living with mental illness. Two of our groups include Wellness Recovery Action Plan and Journaling as a Wellness Tool. But that's not all we've been able to do. We're working closely and collaborating with all six Violence Against Women shelters in Ottawa to explore the mental health needs of women and to help us improve our services. We provide education, mental health first aid training and support to community mental health programs and frontline shelter staff at 27 different agencies. We've partnered with community programs to facilitate learning sessions where we've educated hundreds of professionals on women's mental health. Last year, we partnered with the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Centre where we continue to provide peer support to new moms experiencing mental health concerns. We connect midwives and midwifery clients to mental health resources, as well as facilitate an advisory committee on perinatal mental health. Our peer support group research findings have been presented at two national conferences, and we've hosted the only annual Women's Mental Health Conference in Canada nine times. Because of your support, the Royal has been able to change so many women's lives in our community. Thank you. Register and or donate at runforwomen.ca. Your support is literally helping tens of thousands of women get the help and care that they need. We're showing them that they're not alone because too often women experiencing postpartum do feel like they're alone, but they're not. And here are stories from two women in Toronto who found support and treatment at a hospital that is leading the way in research and care in so many areas and is changing lives because of you. I experienced postpartum depression and anxiety after my second child was born and the women's mental health program saved my life. What I like most about Women's College Hospital is that they're changing lives. They changed my life and they are doing research that will and is changing women's lives across the country. My name is Naomi. I'm a working mom, raising a family with my partner in Toronto. My journey began when my second child was born and a friend encouraged me to go and see my GP to get assessed for postpartum depression and anxiety. She noticed the signs right away. What I was experiencing was not just your typical baby blues, that it was much more serious than that. Services that are available here, like the one-to-one -one therapy, the support groups, they enable women to get back on their feet. I was in really bad shape. Um, and I feel like the services literally saved my life. If I hadn't been part of the program, I do not think I would be where I am today, back at work, healthy, um, able to take care of my family. My name's Dawn Levine, 36 years old, and I have three children. My journey here at Women's College started in 2012 when my first daughter was born. I knew that I didn't feel happy and I had sort of understood that I had probably experienced postpartum depression and anxiety. So I spoke to my family doctor here at Women's College and she referred me to the Reproductive Life Stages program here. It was the beginning of great support. 
I did learn as well um, through our group session how important exercise is. Walking um, was my first form of self-therapy. I got out every day, twice a day, and walked the stroller. Power walked the stroller and just sort of sweat it out. What I like most about my sessions here is that I feel like there's just an elevated level of support. Um, it's a women's hospital and they just get it. My experience here at Women's College has improved my day-to-day -day life immensely. I mean, I went from someone who was truly suffering, I call them the dark days, to someone who has, I would say, made her mess her message which is amazing and empowering and so many close friends have been able to access programs here because I was able to share that story with them. Our final course review takes us from coast to coast. St. John's Newfoundland gets right into the run for women. Here is Laura Ivany from our charity partner Stella Circle to share the charm of the run for women route on the rock. route and a very special windy place. We've checked in from coast to coast seeing the change that can happen when we come together. Big change doesn't happen without the support of our government. And Catherine McKenna, Member of Parliament and Run for Women participant is up next. Welcome to Catherine McKenna, Member of Parliament and Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. Hello. Hello. Thank you for being here today. I want to hear all about your team for the Run for Women. Uh, well, I'm really, really excited about uh, the Run for Women. As you can see, I have my t-shirt from past years um, and it's called Kicking the Asphalt. I love it. So, because, uh, you know, Minister of Infrastructure, you know, there's some asphalt in our portfolio uh, and uh, it's just a great group of public servants who I'm joining uh, for something that's really important. And I think that clearly, you know, it's been a hard time for everyone. So I think everyone's excited about getting some training in, uh, getting out in the fresh air, um, obviously physically distancing when you do these things. Um, but also, uh, I know mental health has been really tough for folks, and uh, I talk about it with my team. Um, I know uh, in the government, we think about that uh, a lot because I mean, people are working from home. It's very challenging situations. You have your children there. Um, it's really stressful. So uh, I think it's just a really important reminder that mental health is so important for everyone and that we all have a role to support great organizations in our community that are really supporting uh, women um, who may be struggling and who knows who's going to go through that. So uh, we're all there and I'm very excited about the run. So if you were actually at the event, which, you know, is not happening this year, unfortunately, we're doing it online. But if you were there speaking to thousands of people participating in Run for Women, what kind of words of inspiration and encouragement would you share? It was just be let's support each other. Um, you know what, mental health, so many folks have mental health challenges at different periods in their lives. And it's especially hard during COVID. Um, so let's just stick together, um, have some fun, get outside, which is good for your mental health. Uh, I 
have in the summer, try to swim as I mu as much as I can uh, in lakes uh, uh, across Ontario, because um, I find that's where I get uh, a little boost, um, get some exercise, but just, you know, feel a little bit better. So, you know what, we're going to get through this. It is a really hard time. Um, and there's so many, you know, women out there and men who want to support you. Um, and if you have challenges with mental health and you're really feeling like it's hard, please, please reach out. Uh, you can get through this. Um, I know you can. Um, and we are going to support amazing uh, organizations um, that do great work to support uh, women's mental health. Yes, we are. Thank you so much for the time today. Thank you very much. Bye. Our last guest is a very special person in Canada's walking and running community. John Stanton, founder of The Running Room, has inspired close to 1 million Canadian walkers and runners learning to run everything from a 5K to a marathon. I'm one of those 1 million. Thank you, John Stanton, for getting me across that marathon finish line. He's got a little inspiration for you right now. We'd like to welcome John Stanton, founder of The Running Room. John, can you tell us a little bit about The Running Room's connection to Run for Women? Well, I certainly can, Catherine. It, uh, it goes back to uh, 2012. Uh, originally, we started uh, Run for Women because uh, women were telling us that they needed uh, an escape race to go to, a goal race to uh, use in their training. And we did it primarily as a women's only event kind of thing so people could interact with each other. Uh, and we, at the time, discovered that the mental health issue was really, really forefront of everybody. And in 2013, uh, we partnered with Shoppers Drug Mart and they became the title sponsor. And uh, we started to uh, raise funds for women's mental health uh, because mental health had become such an issue. We were in the midst of, uh, you know, a financial crisis where people were worried about financial affairs. There was a lot of pressures on families and working families where both parents were working and uh, pressures from military families uh, because we had uh, troops uh, deployed to various sites and uh, disjointed families that uh, mental health became a, a big issue. And then the normal mental health issues that all of us, uh, I think, recognized, but it was, uh, we kept it in the closet. There wasn't a conversation around it. And I think that we, along with uh, shoppers, uh, thanks to their initiatives, uh, have taken mental health and made it a conversation. If you go into your local coffee house today, people talk about mental health. And it used to be it was almost taboo. And we were embarrassed if we had a mental health issue ourselves or if we knew somebody with mental health. We, were, we kind of fumbled and didn't know what to do and how to say. And sometimes all you have to do is listen and just, just be a listening board for, for someone with mental health. And get mental health into the workplace, get mental health into the community, get it into your family unit uh, so that it became there. And what better way to do it than through running? What kind of encouragement can you offer people watching? There are thousands of people watching today. Encouragement for mental health, encouragement for being part of an event like Run for Women. Well, I think it does. The most important thing, it creates a team environment. You know, I said earlier that, uh, you know, the solution to our mental health crisis is really a team environment. It rests with all of us doing our part. No different than COVID. COVID crisis right now doesn't lie just with the healthcare professionals. It lies with all of us doing the right things at the right time and lo looking after not only ourselves, but after our, those that are around us and respecting ourselves and respecting those that are around us. I think running is often thought of as a solitary uh, elusive kind of sport that you see that lonely long distance runner out there or that walker that's out there walking alone. Well, the solitude and the reflective time and the empowerment that comes from a solitary run or walk is tremendously important to people right now. That often when you don't feel like going for a walk or going for a run, even if you just have somebody in your household that says, hey, come on, buddy, you need to get your butt out the door and get that walk in or get that run in. When you come back, you'll, you'll say to them, well, thank you for doing that. I, I didn't want to go out. The last thing I wanted to do was go for a run tonight. But you come back and you discover that you're mentally fatigued. Very few of us are physically fatigued after our workday environment. What we need is a simulation from exercise and, and the benefits that we uh, can come from, from being regular in that exercise. 
A wealth of wisdom. Thank you so much for your time today. All right. Good luck to everyone in the run. Enjoy the process and enjoy the day of celebration. That brings us to the close of the Run for Women Day in Canada broadcast. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you more for what you have done to come together and create this unstoppable movement. Today is extremely important. Today, there are people all across Canada who have come together, who believe that we can make a change, that we can be there to support each other. Thanks to our title sponsor, Shoppers Drug Mart Farm Prix, for their incredible support as a catalyst of change in women's health over the past eight years. You can still raise funds online for your favorite women's mental health charity partner. That's until October 1st. So keep going and get out there and run or walk if you haven't already. Thanks, everyone, and we will see you next year. If we touch women, we touch the family. As women, we're expected to do it all. Sometimes you need to ask for help. When I had my son, I experienced postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, and psychosis symptoms. We really wanted to do an empowering event. Exercise acts like an antidepressant for a lot of people, especially people who have mild to moderate depression. Who's pumped to run? Woo! Now I'm back to myself, a mom to the most amazing little boy, whom I love more than words can describe. All of you have transformed mental health 